This was the scene of the crime. In our book, it's murder. Same old story to begin with. Victim young, good looking, wanted to get on television. Had everything it takes for a great career. Someplace along the line, got mixed up with the wrong guy. You know, wound up dead. Who did it? We don't know. All we got are suspects. There's a guy named of Jones. I had nothing to do with killing her. Then there's Smith. Why would I do anything to hurt her? I loved her. And Brown. I know, you're trying to make me the fall guy. It won't work. She was with me a lot, sure, but I was taking care of her. And Harris. I couldn't have done her any harm. Somebody did. Somebody murdered her. My job, find out who. We questioned the suspects, got their stories. Why ask me all these questions? Just routine. Well, I got nothing to hide. I'm innocent, so help me. So, a murder that everybody says couldn't have happened. We don't know who did it. As for you, we figure you're innocent. This case, you can go. Just one thing, get a little careless, and we may be after you for murder. Right here, black and white murder mysteries from the 1930s and 40s on Hastings Mystery Theater. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us to 1934 for a Progressive Studios release, A Woman Condemned. Barbara Hammond is on trial for murder. The evidence against her is strong and her alibi has proven to be a pack of lies. It certainly appears that it'll be an open and shut case. But Jerry Beale is a reporter covering the case, and he has a gut feeling that she is innocent, and he sets about to prove it. Starring as the accused is Claudia Dell. She was born in San Antonio in 1910. She made lots of movies in the 1930s, but her career went into decline in the 1940s. She was often fodder for the Hollywood gossip magazines, who always had her intimately involved with many, many big movie studio executives. She died in 1977 at the age of 68. Playing as the young reporter is Richard Hemingway. He was born in New Jersey in 1908 and in his youth he was a Golden Gloves boxing champion. It's not generally known how he got into movies and he probably wondered himself because he did not like it at all. He made just four movies in two years and then he got out of Dodge and never messed with Hollywood or movies again. He died in 1970 at the age of 62. Let's return to 1934 and enjoy A Woman Condemned. That was beautiful. And now, Lindsay, may I have just a moment to say goodbye 
to my unseen friends who have been so kind to me. Yes, Jane, on one condition, that you promise them that you'll come back to us soon. It's awfully hard to leave so many friends, even for a short time. But I do hope to be back with you soon. So I won't say goodbye. Just off the Zane, and God bless you all. The same to you, Jane, and come back to us soon. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to the one and only Jane Merrick, who has sung her way into the hearts of thousands. I know you'd like to join me in wishing her the best vacation ever. This program comes to you every day at this time through the courtesy of Consolidated Dairies, whose unexcelled products should be on every table every day. And now we present another episode in that domestic drama, The Trouble of the Tipple. Your thoughts. I'd gladly sell them. They're not very happy ones. <laughs> Neither are mine. But I can't help it. I must get away from everything. Why, Jane, I believe you're frightened. Yes, Jim, terribly frightened. It isn't like you to run away from things. What are you afraid of, dear? Whatever it is. Can't we face it together? Marry me and... Oh, if I only could. Jim, no matter what happens, remember I do love you. That's all I can say now. So, goodbye until... Until when? Until I can come to you and say yes. Oh, I thought you had decided to call me. Dangerous? Yes. But isn't your freedom worth the risk? Much money? For a big radio star like you? And uh, remember, I do not accept checks. I understand. I'll bring it to you in cash. Nobody must know anything about it. Goodbye. Remember, Sally, just not in to anyone and everyone that phones or calls. Yes, Miss Jane, I understand. Just not in. That's right, Sally. You can go. Yes, ma'am. I tell you, Lindsay, consolidated dairies are going to cancel their time if we don't do something. They admit that this new girl is good but that their listeners are not interested. 
They're all clamoring for Jane Merrick. Even our studio audience has dwindled to nothing. The station is deluged with phone calls and letters. Consolidated as a right to kick. And that's an account we can't afford to lose. If I could only tell them when she's coming back, we might be able to hold them. Haven't you any idea? You know as much as I do. That maid of Jane's won't tell me a thing. I've called her so often now, she won't answer the phone anymore. Okay, I'm going to try something else. Wish me luck. here. You've got to help me get in touch with Miss Mary. She just stayed in, Mr. Wallace. That's all I know. But it means a lot of money to her. Maybe her future. Surely you must know where to get a message to her. I just remembered, Mr. Wallace. Now, uh, think hard, Sally. Maybe you can remember if, uh... <clears throat> very strange about the whole affair. She might even be in danger. I want to help and protect her, but it's a delicate situation. Yes, yes, I understand. She might even resent being watched, huh? But you can depend upon us, Mr. Wallace. You may be sure that we will not put a local operative on the case. She might be recognized. Ah, let me see. By George, I have the right one for the job. Works out of our New York office. Very expensive, but very efficient. Oh, the expense doesn't matter. Okay, I'll put through a call once. Long distance.
Oh, no, there he goes. Step on it. Do you need any help? I suppose you lost your key and don't want to wake your mother, huh? Why, why, officer, how did you know? Oh, sure, it's a gift. Hey, listen, sister, I know all the answers. And you better be thinking of a couple because you're going to need them where you're going, down at the night court. If I get my hands in him, I'll kill him. The dirty hound. I just be after telling him. Look in my eye. And uh, just as I saw him. Joe Burns. Your name is Joe Burns? Your charge for the evading payment of railroad fare. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Two days. Come on. Your name is Pietro Mazzetti? Si, yes, senor. You're charged with peddling without a license. Are you guilty or not guilty? I don't know, Bishop Robbie and Anthony. Explain the charge to me. Você que disse que está vindo na calle sem licença nenhuma. Falou e vou aqui, vou exemplo com a licença. Eu não provo de licença, não tenho nada. Não sei por que me aportar aqui. Não sei por que me aportar aqui. Você está guilty. Ten dollars for five days. Ten dollars. Falou e me pediu cinco dias. É só cinco dias não me basta mais. Sure. More publicity in a jury trial. That's his angle. Lay off till I do a little sleuthing. I got a hunch it's a gag. Say, speaking of gags, are you in the doghouse with the judge? The big bad wolf is wise that you gave him a bum steer on that drunk he let off last night. The guy you told him was Mr.'s nephew. I had to do something. I couldn't let him lock up my bootlegger. Well, take a tip from me. Lay off him tonight. He's gunning for you. I got a hunch he's a bum shot. But suspends the sentence. Now you may go home with your wife, but see that you behave. Beg pardon, Your Honor, but I feel better if I could serve the time. I deserve it. <laughs> Wait, this is not a show, nor is it a nightclub for your entertainment. Nick, I'll have order here or I'll clear the court. You've got a hunch he's not in a very good humor. Well, don't you try and cheer him up. Did you ever see such black eyes? And has the old dame got a snoop for? No, you are romantic half-wit. The one at the other end. What a girl.
Your name is Barbara Hammond? You were discovered on the fire escape of the Carlton Apartments in the act of trying to open a window. Now, just what were you doing there? Barbara, will you never learn? I beg your pardon, Your Honor, but I was so taken by surprise. You see, this young woman's my fiance. Your Honor, Barbara has one very bad habit. And Judge, I've tried so hard to cure her. She's a confirmed practical joker. And tonight, I'm afraid she's been up to roll tricks. You see, I live at the cop. Now, a good reprimand from you makes sure the one thing that stands in the way of our habits. You will help, won't you, Judge? Young woman, I have just learned that you indulge in the vicious practice of playing practical jokes. That it has been the cause of much mental anguish to this young man to whom you are engaged. Who is obviously a very sensitive, high-minded young man. Who deserves something. Practical jokes usually get somebody into trouble. Sometimes they result in tragedy. Therefore, it is the desire of this court to protect you from your own tendencies by placing you in the custody of your husband. Oh, but Your Honor, I, I haven't any husband. A mere detail which the court will take care of now. <laughs> now, if you please, you two young people, send for the county clerk. I can save a lot of time by asking you a few questions. I must know your ages, your occupation, I'm not the only one who plays practical jokes. Gee, Barb, Miss Hammond, I'm terribly sorry. You want me? Well, I, I, I'm sorry a gesture to help me got you into this. And I can't even give you the explanation that I owe you right now. Will you trust me for a few days, and then, then I'll explain everything. And then, of course, you can, you can have the judge's little joke annulled. Annulled? But I'm just beginning to like married life. You're being swell about this. You know something? You're the nicest husband I've ever had. Thanks a lot, Jerry Beale. I wish there was something I could do to show my gratitude. There is. Have supper with me. Anybody would agree that a wedding supper is in order. Well, I would like to, but I can't tonight, really. Hey, I, I will have dinner with you on Thursday, if you like. If I like? Okay. I'll meet you here at 7. Taxi! Well, goodbye until Thursday. Right. The courthouse steps at 7. Hey, Jim, what's the lowdown on this Jane Merrick business? If she's pulling a fast one on the station after all you've done for her... Oh, no, Jerry. Not Jane. She'd never do things that way. She must have a good reason for laying off. I've got a hunch you like her. A lot. I do, Jerry. And I'm worried. There's something strange about the whole thing. And I don't know the answer. Yet. But let's forget personalities. 
the station's in a spot. Why, Consolidated Dairies would walk out tomorrow if they knew Jane wasn't coming back. What a story. Famous radio star walks out on a station at Mater. Oh, boy, here's where yours truly gets a raise. Not a chance, Jerry. I'm going to ask all you news hounds to lay off Jane. What is the scoop? Big headlines, my chance. Oh, what's the scoop between friends? Okay, old top. I've got to hunt you win. Of course, I don't mind losing the raise. But I do hate to throw the paper down. Swell guy. Gee, I gotta bust along. Got a heavy day. Be seeing ya. Jerry, you haven't asked me a single question tonight. Maybe I like guessing games. But don't forget, I'm allowed three questions, and you have to answer. How, where, and when am I going to see you again? Oh, soon, Jerry. Very soon, I hope. Good night. You know, there isn't anything I wouldn't do to help. I do know it, Jerry. And that helps.
fair deal. <laughs> That's like a man. I suppose you gave me a square deal. If you'd care, you would certainly would have tried to help. And why should I? You belong to another woman. She didn't mean anything to me. I was in a spot. I had to marry her. But that's very easily fixed if you'll just say the word. Oh, Dan, I'm all confused. Can I think this over and let you know tomorrow? Sure, honey. Have a night wait five years. Uh, by the way, I need a little steak. How are you fixed? I'm not. I haven't any money to give you, Dan. I tell you, I need some money right away, or I'll be in a jam again. And why should I, when Radio Star have plenty? Oh, I can't. All right. I'll see what I have. Ah, that girl. How about throwing in some jewelry? For the cash. There isn't any here. Not much. That's all I have, then. Well, I guess it will do for the moment. Honey, see you tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Sit down. Izzy, what is it? Oh! Hush, Meg. Don't phone for the police. I'll keep an eye on this woman. Oh, but please. Let me explain. You don't understand. I've got oh, to... Oh, but maybe the police will. Not Sarge, I was waiting for a police car. Thought you'd never get here.
Murder, huh? Yes, my wife and I heard a shot and a scream, and when I came into the room, I found that girl with a gun in her hand. How did it get there? I made her drop it. Nothing's been touched, officer. C. Benham. Our apartment is next door. Okay, Mr. Benham. You can go back to bed. The chief will want to see you later. Very well. Jane Murray, put on the spot. And buy a dame. Why did you kill her? I gotta what? hunt you with self-defense. You keep out of this. She don't need your help to think of answers. Come on now. Why did you kill her? But gee, Sarge, you don't expect a dame to talk in a spot like this. She's wiser than anything she says can be used against her. Too bad you ain't that wise. Okay, Kelly. Take along to headquarters. I'll wait for the coroner. Am I going to need the jewelry? Take a chance on her, Kelly. I will. Wise guy. Gee, that's gonna be tough on Jim. Jim? Jim who? Why, Jim Wallace. The head of the radio station where she sang. He was pretty keen about her. Why didn't you say so before? Where can I locate him? What's his address? You see, I'd, I'd hope to marry Miss Merrick. Didn't you say, Mr. Wallace, that Miss Merrick had gone away for a vacation? Didn't you know that she'd return? No, but you see... Sarge, I got a hunch you better postpone this until tomorrow. At headquarters. Jim will be in better shape to help then. Feels right. It's getting late. Drop in and see the chief tomorrow, Mr. Wallace. Yes, of course. Interrupting our musical program for more details of the shocking murder of Jane Murray, famous radio star whose death climaxes the colorful career of one of radio's most popular. All evidence points to the guilt of the unknown young woman found in Miss Merrick's apartment at the time of the crime, and a charge of murder has. What do you know about the girl? Well, she gave the name of Betty Houston. But we discovered she was living in a small family hotel under the name of Beatrice Hale. Do either of those names mean anything to you? Well, she's got plenty of what it takes. The boys have had her in the now on the grill for the last three hours, and she hasn't better than I. Just refuses to talk. What could have been her motive? I didn't know Miss Merrick had an enemy in the world. She was a wonderful woman, Chief. Now, a little time the coolers loosened tongues before. I'm going to let you have a look at her. You may recognize her. Bring her in. Well, Mr. Wallace? You ever see her before? No, Chief, never. All right, lock her up until the DA is ready for her. Charlie, 17451 signs up. 
Good, Jerry. And it's not going to do you any good to refuse to talk. Oh, gee, Barbara, you must make some move to defend yourself. Perhaps I have no defense, Jerry. Fishing, eh? You'd like to know how much I love you. Quit clowning, honey. And tell me something I can do to get you out of this. I've got to see it through alone. I don't want you mixed up in it, Jerry. There isn't anything you can do, really. Says you. I warn you, I'm not going to be made a widower without a struggle. Shh. I'll either get you out of this mess, or get myself in. And I got a hunch I'll be seeing you. Certain parties you do know are anxious to help. May I take them a message? Yes. Just this. Don't make a move. If I need help, they'll get the word. Thanks a lot. Department. Police headquarters calling. Give me the manager. This is the manager. Riley. No, nobody's been here today. Thought you were through with the investigation. Riley's going to take a couple of more pictures in Miss Merrick's bedroom. When he comes, let him in the apartment. All right. Riley, I was telling you to report right back to headquarters when you got through. Thanks, old man. listen to your beautiful voice and dream of meeting you in person. Lonely Ranch. Blurbs and more blurbs. Richmond, 
Is this Alhambra 4200? Yes. Well, who is this? Who do you wish to speak to? Well, uh, uh, say, what place is this and where is it? Why do you want to know? Who are you? Say, what is this, a game? I'm told to call a number and I can't even get a sensible answer. Who you are or where... Supervisor, I want the street address, the phone. This is Alhambra, 4200. Yes. What do you mean you can't give that information? Listen, sister, you're talking to the police. Now crack out with that address or there'll be one less supervisor. That's better. What do you want? Uh, I want to see the doctor. Doctor's busy now. Office hours from 10 to 12 in the morning. But I gotta see him. Doctor never admits patients without consultation. 10 to 12 in the morning. Darn funny. Yes. This is Jim Wallace. Oh, hello, Jerry. What's up? Come out at this time of night? Now, Jerry, after all. What? Jane? What do you mean? Where are you now? I'll get there as fast as my car can make it. I tell you, I saw her in there, Jim. 
They've got our body and they're doing something horrible to it. They won't let us in there. We gotta get the police. But we've got to be sure, Jerry. Why, it couldn't possibly be Jane. Well, let's have a look anyhow. Come on. them up. There are a lot of people in this house that wouldn't want to wait and gag them. Burglars, huh? I could have shot you both and never been blamed. Consequently, both your lives belong to me. I'll put them to a better use. In the interest of science. I've often wished to make an intimate study of the mental processes of a criminal caught in the commission of a crime. To see his brain at work. Now. <laughs> Just as I thought. All criminals are cowards. Doctor, what are you all doing to Mr. Waller? Do you know this man? Sure, I know Mr. Waller. Well, who is he? Well, he's the boss man down at the radio station. What Miss Merrick sings at? Sir uh, Heinrich, I'm, I'm tired. Of... And how is Miss Merrick now? Oh, she's sleeping like a little child, Doctor. Mm-hmm. After the murder, I found myself in a terrible dilemma. You see, Miss Merrick has just undergone an operation to remove a birthmark. I was sworn to keep her secret. And yet a murder has been committed. So I had to call the police. The police know? Yes, the maid told them that after Miss Merrick arrived here, her twin sister came to the apartment to hide from someone of whom she was in mortal fear. Pardon me, Doctor. Yes? But Miss Merrick is awake now. Uh, wait for a moment, Henry. By tomorrow, Miss Merrick will be sufficiently recovered to be told what has happened. And also to help the police punish the murderer. Now you may see her. But for just one moment. And remember, no excitement. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Barbara didn't do it. I'll never believe she did it. Steady, my friend. As if a silly birthmark could have mattered. Nothing matters now. I'll never let you get away from me again. I'll raise five. I'll see it. Hell, I'm calling. I'm gonna fall. King's up. Huh? 
Three seven. Not good enough, boys. Thirty miles old railroad. Well, that's good enough for my money. Me too. Oh, hello, Kennedy. Hi, Evans. You boys must have brought me luck. Well, isn't Dapper Dan in the flesh? Funny thing, the chief was just asking about you today. Wondered why you hadn't been down to see him since you got back. How oh, nice. Lonesome for me, eh? Well, well. You know, the straight and narrow doesn't lead to his neighborhood. So you tell him hello for me. How about paying him a little visit? Now. Now? Yeah. yeah. We got a car outside. We'll take you down. Swell. Why not? You guys uh, can pay me later. Okay. Uh, wish you luck. All right, boys, have a new game. Hey. I've got a hunch they brought you down here to headquarters for another grilling. Are you still going to refuse to talk? Oh, Barbara, I don't understand you. Well, don't try to, Jerry. Look at me, honey. It wouldn't make any difference to me if you had done it. You know that, don't you? But you didn't do it. You don't fool me. But you do know who did it, don't you? Don't ask me any questions, Jerry. I can't answer. Nine months off for good behavior. And the new deal for yours truly from now on. And with a square deck portion. Chief will sure be glad to hear that. What is he anyway? I thought you wanted to see me. I don't remember. I don't remember! Chief will be through pretty quick. He's essentially to get a confession now. He wants you, Kennedy. Come on in, Dan, while you're waiting. Now let's go back to refresh your memory. For several days prior to the murder, you had kept track of Jane Merrick's every movement. Then, on the night of September the 20th, you entered her apartment in the fire escape and killed her. Why? I'll tell you why. Because the night before, the man you loved, the man who had promised to marry you, told you the truth, that he cared about somebody else. That's not true. That's not true. No. Girl's game. But she's got a break. Then why did you say, I know it's that medic woman. I'll kill her. She shan't take you away from me. That light, that light, it, it's blinding me. Here's a picture I want you to look at. A photograph of the woman you murdered. The inscription will interest you. God bless you, Jim, and keep you always mine. Look at it. Look at it! No! Look at it! No! No! Take it away! Well, a dame, wasn't she? Yes, well. Now, let's go back to the night of the murder. About 8 o'clock, you phoned Miss Merrick and demanded to see her. And she refused and you threatened her. Then later that night, you went calling by the way of the fire escape, only to find your lover there. So you watched him, heard their tender goodbyes, and waited with murder in your heart until she was alone and helpless. Why didn't you kill him, too? Did you think that he would take you back if you put her out of the way? Oh. Oh, my eyes. I can't see. Turn it off. Okay, then. We'll play bridge. Where have they got her, Kenny? What are they doing with her? The chief's got no right to. Calm yourself, kid. He's trying to help her. I can't tell it any longer. Oh, yes, you can. It didn't bother you much to put a bullet in the heart of the defenseless woman. She took your lover away from me, and you hated her. She was begging for mercy, and you shut her down in cold blood. You made it? Oh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
I did it. I did it. I did it. I killed her. Oh, I, I killed her. Barbara. No, no, she couldn't have done it. Couldn't have done it. Let me go. Let me go. Okay, Evans, let him go. Well, Dan, hello. Hello, Chief. Just between us, it's a little irregular, but we got a confession. Uh, well, uh, it's getting late, Chief. I guess you must be all in now. I'll drop around sometime. What's the matter, you birds? Somebody turn off that infernal thing, let's get some decent light. Oh, by the way, Dan, is the new warden at the big house on the level? I've had some info. What the... Just a minute, Chief. The switch is jammed. Forgiven you, eh? But I waited five years to pay you off. Five long years in that hell you sent me to. But I got you, you hear me? I got you! <laughs> and I, I kill you! You! Take him away. Jerry, please try to understand. I understand plenty. I may be dumb, but I'm not too dumb to know when I'd be made a sucker. That guy Dan and I ought to team up. He sure can take a lot of punishment. Thanks a lot, Miss Merrick. But I'm afraid this has been an ordeal for you. I'm going to take Miss Merrick right home. Well, I suppose you think I enjoyed hurting you. Oh, Barbara, then why didn't you trust me? What's that got to do with it? You should be mighty proud of her. She followed orders like the good sort as she is. The department owes you a lot. Miss Hammond, excuse me, Mrs. Beale. You were splendid. You see, by appearing guilty, that gave us time to run down the real murderer. And that little show, that forced confession, was all her idea. And all the time I thought I was detecting, you were the real thing. Oh, well, I, I still think you're pretty swell, even though you are a bum detective. Well, I can't be ruled out for trying, can I? Oh, no. Not when you're trying for me. I got a hunch you love me. Well, shall I hold a saw with a sudden exposure for the honeymoon? <laughs> moment. I don't think Lucky's shown up yet tonight. What's the combination? No, Marty. That's my job. Now may I have to box in the letter? Remember, Catherine, you promised me to be a good girl. I had to see you. Why? Because I had a wife who needed killing, and you had a husband who took care of it? Start from. Let's go. 
Greetings. We hope you enjoy watching Hastings Mystery Theater and the film you just viewed. Randall Schaefer, his wife Judy and program manager Dan LeClaire combined efforts to bring these productions to you, free of charge and almost always without ads. We love seeing the comments you leave about our movies in the comments section under each video production. This means so much to us. Also, Randall appreciates receiving and responding to your many emails. Thank you viewers, for liking, commenting and subscribing to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss an upload. Blessings to you, from Hastings, Michigan, USA.